Well, welcome to Christ and Culture. This is Pastor Jeff Short. Glad to have you along for our discussion today. Today we're going to be talking about a sad, sad development that's taking place really all over our country, and that is this acceptance of the Gay Pride Month of June. Now, this is coming to every single town in the United States. This is coming to of course, the big cities like New York City and Los Angeles and Chicago, these are all sort of leading the way to this sort of Sodom and Gomorrah culture. But now it's even coming into small towns and small cities across the country. We saw this happen a few weeks ago in Jamestown, New York. We saw the entire downtown area of Jamestown, New York, basically taken over for this so-called gay pride celebration. Now, what is interesting is that, and I've seen this happen over the last 10 years, the organizers of the gay pride or the homosexual rights or LGBTQ plus or whatever the acronyms are that they extend out now, uh, they continue to obfuscate and they twist words and they try to propagandize communities into accepting their cause. And what I mean by that is I saw this happen about a decade ago. These organizations would slip in and start calling these rallies pride rallies. And I saw this happen in Jamestown where they would slip in an, a rally on a Saturday morning calling it South Side Pride Festival. So you're thinking, okay, well, we've seen community pride in 20, 30 years ago. That used to mean that the community on the South Side would get together. Maybe they'd have some kind of a removal of rubbish and garbage along the sides of the roads, and they would clean up and spruce up their neighborhood, and they called it South Side Pride because it was a community pride. They were pri proud of their homes, they're proud of their properties, proud of their streets, proud of their sidewalks. They wanted to show that they were community spirited and they would call it a Southside Pride uh, Day or rally. But what began to take place, I began to notice, is that these uh, homosexual gay rights groups would begin to hijack the community pride days. And instead of just saying, we're proud of our community, they would start interjecting and injecting this gay pride, gay rights, homosexual rights, gay pride parade, gay day, uh, gay month. Now we have a national uh, gay month of June. Why an entire month dedicated to a sexual perverted act? I don't know. This is, this is again, it was hijacked. And so, you have these powerful gay lobby groups basically pressuring people into uh, submitting to their cause or else they'll uh, do things like strike or they will do boycotts or they'll pressure, do political pressuring into the point where people are caving in all the time. Well, what happened in Jamestown is they did that propagandizing and twisting of words and so they organized a Community Jamestown Pride Day, okay? So very harmless title. You know, you'd have some of the older people saying, hey, you know, yeah, we're proud of our city, Jamestown, so let's go out there and show support for our cities in, uh, in, in, in support of pride. And that is not at all what was taking place. What was taking place was a gay pride day, and so let's roll this clip here and I'll show you what I mean and then I'll talk about it. But this is really sneaky and deceptive and secretive. And so we want to analyze this and say, look, this has got to stop. We, we're, our, our culture is being hijacked by sexual deviant perverts and they're using it to promote the normalization of immorality. This is an immoral act any kind of deviant, sexual, perversive acts are forbidden in Scripture. Uh, it's the same way with adultery. It's the same way with fornication. It's the same way 
with bestiality. It's the same way with pedophilia. And it's the same way with homosexuality or bisexuality or transgenderism or you name it. The whole LGBTQ spectrum is full of immorality and filth and, and sin and anti-biblical, anti-Christian uh, practices, and it's being normalized in our culture today. I'll show you that here with this news clip. Let's bring up the news clip here. And here is Western New York News, and let's analyze this and see what it says. Well, after more than a year of uncertainty because of COVID-19, Jamestown Pride will have its first festival next month. Organizers of the Jamestown Pride, an LGBTQI and supportive allies event, announced during a meeting last night that the festival will take place July 12th at the Jamestown Public Market on 3rd Street. The festival was canceled last June because of the pandemic, which left the future of a Pride Festival in question. Coordinator Sheridan Smith acknowledged that organizers saw a shift in where they allocated funding as COVID continued. Smith, however, says that the group never saw a drop in financial support. You know, the organizations that backed us moved right into the new year with us. So, you know, this turned out a lot better than anyone could have anticipated a year ago. Um, so we are doing absolutely fine financially. Now, gay pride and pride culture will be celebrated in a family-friendly manner. At the okay, stop right there. Stop right there. Let's, there I am. Um, did you hear what he just said? He said that the Jamestown Gay Pride Day celebrations will be celebrated in a family-friendly manner. Let's hear that again. He said that they will be celebrated in a family-friendly manner. What is he talking about? What is this nonsense? Uh, let's hear that again. Now, gay pride and pride culture will be celebrated in a family-friendly manner at the Jamestown Public Market along 3rd that day. So, yes, that's what he said. He said that the uh, Gay Pride Day will be celebrated in a family-friendly manner. Well, what is that exactly does that mean, uh, celebrated in a family-friendly manner? Um, you know, that's really the whole question here. What is he talking about? Um, and, and what we're going to find out is that uh, what he's talking about is really pretty sick stuff that's being uh, promoted in a so-called family-friendly manner. And let's just have a look at some of this stuff that is supposedly um, a family-friendly event. Let's, let's take a look at some of this stuff and see what he is saying. Um, let me get this up here in the the box so that we can look at this and see what is actually being said here uh, give me a second here there we go all right so we're going to pull that up and then we're going to Okay, we see a little bit of it there. Let's let's go with that that we already see there and see if we can uh, figure out what is this so-called uh, family-friendly act. Friends. So here is the drag queen. So this drag queen is at a so-called family-friendly event in downtown Jamestown. This is a dude. This is a guy. This is a guy in drag. He is supposed to be, uh, he's supposed to be, I guess, um, <laughs> supposed to be, here he is. Okay, let's bring this up. This dude 
is dressed in a pink dress. And this is supposed to be a family-friendly event in Jamestown, New York, a uh, small town, small city uh, in the United States. And he comes sashaying up here. This is a transvestite. This is a, a, a guy dressed as a girl. He looks like a guy dressed as a girl. And he's, he's not the act, though. This is at a family-friendly event. Star, the star of drag, yes. Pandora Box. No! There's the real star of the show, this so-called RuPaul drag queen. RuPaul is a drag queen, famous drag queen out in Las Vegas, and I think RuPaul has a TV show and so on and so forth. And here is this this so-called drag queen part of RuPaul's um, organization. And this is at a family-friendly event. No, this is not a family-friendly event. I'm sorry, but when you have people who are who are dressed up, who are men who are dressed up as women, parading around in downtown Jamestown, uh, small town, small city, USA, and they are billed as a family-friendly event. It is nothing to do with family-friendly. This is this is this is the burlesque um, decadence that we see. On, for example, if you were to go to a New York uh, City Gay Pride Day parade, you would see all kinds of this stuff taking place all the time. And if you were to go to any number of of uh, gay pride events across the country, you would see this stuff taking place. And this is just part of the gay culture. And this is actually the transgender culture. But who would who would call this family friendly? This is, we are being lied to. We are being taught how to accept sexual perversion. We are being taught how to accept the normalization of sin. We are being taught to accept what the Bible clearly calls sin as just something normal and something that's mainstream and something that should be invited into communities every year, um, this uh, so-called Jamestown Pride celebration is now, this is the first one of its kind, but you can bet next year it's going to be here again and it's going to be here again. And it's going to become mainstream. You see kids in the background. You see uh, families in the background. You see this dude dressed up in this gaudy um, attire. And, you know, it's a caricature of womanhood. You would think that the feminist groups would be up in arms because this dude is appropriating uh, femininity, and he's trying to actually mock it. It actually is a is a sick joke of what femininity is, and everyone can tell, everyone can see, everyone knows that this is a guy. He doesn't look at all like a girl, except he's got a wig on, and he's got a dress on, and he's trying to appropriate womanhood, but he's a guy. So you would think that the feminists would be up in arms, but no, they're all in. They're supporting this. This this is part of, I guess, liberation. And this is now mainstream in the United States. It's becoming uh, mainstream, and it will only get worse and worse and worse every year. Unless people, everyday people, Christians say, nope, Nope, sorry, we're not going in for that. We're not gonna, we're not gonna tolerate that. That is not only against our uh, faith. It's not only against um, 
what God teaches in his word, but it is is sick, it's unnatural, it is uh, it is wrong, and we're going to stand against it. Now, unfortunately, we have we unfortunately we have uh, even churches who are in on this. And you will see here in a second, Jamestown has a very, very uh, liberal church, and they are all in with this uh, gay pride. They're all in. And let's just uh, show you, for example, an example of a church that's all in for gay pride. This church right here is St. Luke's Episcopal Church. And let's see if we can see uh, the name here. Yeah, St. Luke's Episcopal Church. And they've got, lo and behold, they've got the rainbow for Gay Pride Month. And they have gay uh, rainbow tents. And if you go around the front of this church, they have a gay flag, gay pride flag. And they also painted the steps of the church over here. You can't see, it's off to the left, uh, a rainbow color because they're all in on this. Now, this is particularly troubling because this is supposed to be a Christian church. And if you're a Christian church, you're supposed to uh, play by the rules of God and play by God's will. And you're supposed to teach God's will to people of varying cultures. If you're in Africa, you teach God's will to Africans. If you're in Asia, you teach God's will to Asians. If you're Latin America, you teach God's will to Latin Americans, and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter what the culture is. You don't don't switch your truth to match the culture. You teach the truth of God and then call the culture to a higher place. And unfortunately, what is happening today is we have churches who are basically capitulating to the sinful culture. And what they do is they look around, they say, okay, it looks like this is a real popular thing today, gay pride, uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, bisexuality. Uh, It looks like uh, transgenderism is, is getting more popular today. So we need to uh, basically blend in with the crowd and be a part of the what's happening crowd. And so what this church has done is basically said, yeah, we, we capitulate to the crowd. We are definitely all in on gay day. Um, so we're going to promote it. We're going to be part of the Jamestown Pride Day. We're going to show our support for lesbianism and uh, homosexuality and transgenderism. Uh, We're all in for this. Whereas they should be saying, no, we cannot be a part of this. As Christians, we have to follow the will of God. And the will of God says that this is strictly forbidden. This will destroy a culture. If you look in the book of Romans, the first chapter, it says that uh, like, uh, like men, the women gave up the natural relationships with men and burned with lust for one another. Uh, it, it says also the men burned with lust for one another as, as, as these are all grave sins. And so it says that God gave them over in their uh, sins. So he just let them go. He just said, okay, that's what you want to do. Uh, you're on your own. I am not going to uh, protect you. I am not going to uh, help you in any way. You are on your own. Now, another example of this this mainstreaming of the uh, the mainstreaming of the LGBT agenda, we have, for example, I'll bring this up, uh, Jamestown, New York. They actually went so far as to have an official recognition of Gay Pride Day at City Hall. And so they they came to City Hall 
and they said, okay, we're going to actually uh, make this official. So whether people in this city like it or not, it's going to be official. So we're going to make this um, gay pride thing an official act of our city. And so let's show that. So this is downtown, Jamestown, New York, official ceremony recognizing Gay Pride Day by the mayor of the city. And they're bringing the Gay Pride flag up. alongside the New York state flag and the American flag. All right, go enjoy pride. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Hello. So you have that taking place in small town, small city USA all over the country. Now, some people think, no, that's, that's not happening in our, in our country. We still have a strong Judeo-Christian base. We still have morality in our country. No, this, this, this is not taking place all over. Yes, it is. It is. I, I hate to break the news to you, but this is happening all over the nation. And it's not just in the ultra-liberal ultra democrat leftist states like new york even though this example is from new york it is all over the place you're going to find these so-called gay pride celebration days all over the country even in states that have heavy heavy christian influence you're going to find them all over the place and so the problem is that once these things become a part of the cultural tradition and it seems like tradition can be formed like overnight these days because of the power of the internet and the mainstream media they can make something traditional and they can basically tell people oh yeah this is uh this is part of the uh the the landscape now so everybody has to accept this and if you don't Back accept it UN you Washington. are um you are out of it you are just behind the times. So get with the get with the times and uh, be a part of history, they they say. So this that's they think that this is the uh, future of the country. And so as Christians, we need to pray against this. We need to stand against this. We need to vote against this and not simply give in to sexual perversity. That's what it is. Here's another news report and this is an, again normalizing acting like everything's great this is fine trying to be objective journalism no this is advocating sexual immorality this is advocating a overthrow of the judeo-christian worldview in our country let's roll that welcome back to wny news now for the first time in jamestown's 200 year history members of the lgbtqi plus community will gather together this weekend in celebration of Pride Month. WNY News Now's J Dakota Hunter joining us with more on what this festival aims to do. I hear it's more than just a celebration, Dakota, but also an education initiative. So what is, what is really sad about this whole thing is that these guys are just grinning and they're beaming and it's just, whoa, it's just such a great thing that we're celebrating sexual immoral perversity. We This is just exciting, and, and they're just presenting this in such a positive light. I mean, can you believe that just 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, n reporters would not be caught dead talking about this kind of immoral, filthy, degenerate behavior? in public and now you have a couple of guys here who are reporting on this and they are just beaming oh boy this is exciting they're for the first time 
Uh, Jamestown is having Pride Day, and we're going to celebrate Sodom and Gomorrah, and we're going to celebrate um, the uh, defilement of human nature, and we're going to break every commandment in the Bible, and isn't that exciting? They're all excited about this, and they're just reporting with joy. That's right, Justin. What started as a simple question from a Jamestown resident has turned into a first of its kind event celebrating the LGBTQI plus community that's slated to take place this weekend. Jamestown Pride Festival coordinator Sheridan Smith says the festival's origin dates back to nearly two years ago when he noticed the area was missing something. And there have been picnics in the past and other, you know, various events, but no big outward focused Pride Festival. So that was a problem for him. He saw that there was no uh, out and open pride festival and that bothered him. You know, why would the leaders of a city turn their city over to sexual deviance? And why would they turn their downtown street area over to immoral perverts like this? It's really, really discouraging to see cities do this. And it's very discouraging to see these activist groups take control of the narrative in a city where probably most of the people don't really want anything to do with this. Um, so I gathered a bunch of people together and we asked the question. That's when the Pride Steering Committee was formed, stitching together ideas on how to host the area's first ever Pride Fest. We started planning, everything was coming together, and then the world shut down. <laughs> Much of the pre-pandemic work, Smith says, will be included in Saturday's events, which kicks off with a 9.30 a.m. flag raising at City Hall. This will commemorate um, the anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida. So we're going to remember that. We're going to remember what the struggle of pride was and still is. From there, the festival will get underway in the middle of downtown at the Jamestown Public Market along 3rd Street and the Winter Garden Plaza. During that time, those in the LGBTQI plus community will be working together to help foster the next generation of allies, something Smith says is an important element of the coming out process. There are still families that reject people. I have some family of choice um, because, you know, there are people who will lose everything when they come out and everyone when they come out. But more often now, you don't have to lose people. You just gain this community. And, you know, um, the people that you love and have loved you before just become allies. As for what makes a good ally. Part of it is as simple as listening. Um, but part of it is also speaking up when those of us who are tired of speaking up. Okay, so he's going to go on and basically the networks are now giving propaganda time for people to promote the gay agenda. And as Christians, we have to oppose this. We have to be brave enough to stand up and say, no, it's wrong. It's sinful. God opposes it. And judgment will come upon any nation, any city, any state that promotes this sexual perversion. And we need to keep that up until people listen and until they understand. Well, I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this commentary. We'll talk to you next week on another program. God bless.